Howdy lads, you might remember last year I built the rotating ground mount for some of our solar panels to go on. Well the winter's kind of wrecked it a bit. One panel is smashed completely, um, I have to tie it down with ropes every time it's windy. And the drivetrain and centre axle are completely twisted from trying to turn in that wind. So I'm going to try and make it a bit lighter, um, take a few panels off maybe, and build a new stronger drivetrain using this. Which is an old drive shaft out of one of our cars. So let's see how it goes. That's really not aged well at all, has it? Look at the bend in that. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is bring the whole thing down out of the wind a little bit. Now in order to do that without having to take all of that top bit apart and rebuild it again, I'm going to be a little bit cheeky. I'm going to try cutting through the legs. I've marked each one at 20 centimetres, so the whole thing will drop 20 centimetres. And I'm using these two by fours here and a couple of blocks so that it lands exactly where I want it to. And I can just reattach it back at the lower height again. That's if it all goes to plan. If it doesn't, the whole lot's going down the hill. So. Uh, You know you want to. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> that could have been a lot worse. All right, that seemed to go well. I don't know was it still or just dumb luck, but either way it worked. So that'll do, eh? The original drive chain is pretty badly rusted up, and um, some of the links are kind of starting to seize. But I think it's rescuable, so I'm going to try an old mechanic trick I know, um, which is to leave it soaking in brake fluid for maybe 24 or 48 hours. I'm going to go 24 hours on it. Brake fluid makes a great penetrating oil, and it does dissolve rust as well. So to do it, I'm just put it in a tub and let it soak. Make sure it's well submerged. The only other thing to be aware of is that brake fluid is also hydro hygroscopic. And that means that it absorbs moisture from the air. So whatever container you're doing this in, if you're ever trying it out yourself, make sure it's got a lid on it. So what I'm doing here is I'm welding the sprocket onto the shaft. It's not ideal to be welding in the workshop, but it's a bit better than outside in the rain, so not much choice unfortunately. Yeah, I won't hold my breath for welder of the year anytime soon, huh? So here's where I'm at so far. We've got the frame cut down, bring it down out of the wind a bit. The drive shaft is cut to size, sprocket welded on. Um, this is a front drive shaft out of one of our Scoobies and the bearing that this sits on is a rear bearing. Now luckily the spline count and the thickness is the exact same size so they fit perfectly together. The only difference is the length here. This doesn't come through the bearing so I drilled a hole and tapped it to take a bolt to secure it all in place. I didn't have a bearing to secure the lower end of the shaft so I'm using a 22mm socket which being a mechanic I've loads of spare ones of these and it's a nice sliding fit that will keep everything nice and steady once the top end is secured. I'll just pack that full of CV grease to make sure it stays running smooth. So that much is ready to go. Now to power this I'm going to use the wiper motor once again out of the Beamer because it's got lots of torque and it's waterproof but instead of the old drill battery setup I'm going to use this big 12 volt UASA battery. To recharge that, I'm going to use one single solar panel fitted to the front and this little cheap and cheerful 10 amp control unit here. And then of course the DIY reverse polarity relay so I can turn it back and forth on the remote control. Now I know somewhere in the comments or maybe someone watching this is going to ask why am I using all this scrap to do this? Well it's quite simple really. 
we're still saving up for the new inverter and the new shed so I set a restriction on myself that I'm not allowed to spend any money on this project no new parts whatsoever I have to use only things that I have here it's a bit of a scrapyard challenge really so but it is the way it is and there's not much I can do about that so let's crack on Okay, I've just finished wiring up that reverse polarity relay setup again. Um, so I'm going to give it a quick test now and make sure it's working before I put any panels on or do anything else after this. So let's see what happens. Oh yeah, okay. It's still very jerky. I'd love to get a linear actuator for this. It'd be much smoother and slower, but no new parts allowed unfortunately all right that's great news everything's working as it was before let's go ahead and put panels on Oh, I didn't think I'd get that up there myself. Not at 40 years of age anyway. Two decades of lifting gearboxes. Must have been good for something. The last panel going on here is this lonely little guy who's going to recharge the 12 volt battery that powers the drivetrain. Luckily we had these two offcuts from the roof installed that are just barely big enough to fit one panel onto. So once this is fitted and connected, and I'm sure it's charging, I can then go up to the little shed and connect these guys to their charge controller and we'll see if it's all working and how much power I'm getting out of them. I right, see it connected up. LEDs flashing. So, looks like it's working. What do you think, Barney? Is it any good? Nah, you're done with it. All right, mate. <laughs> On your big lump. I have the wiring routed in now, and I've made up these two bolt-on fittings to fit some fuses, one for the panels, one for the batteries. Because this first inverter is already maxed out for solar input, I have to use this, which is the old PWM, Pulse Width Modulation Controller. But it's been sat out here for two years doing nothing. I've no idea if it still works. It's rated for 80 amps at 24 volts, so let's connect up a fuse and see what happens. It wasn't a bad bit of kit in its day. I mean, it's telling me batteries are at 93%. Gives all the various different readings. Tells you what's coming in from the PV, which is zero amps at the minute, because I still have the fuse in my hand here. Has temperature sensor the whole lot. So let's try connect it up, see what happens. Bit of a tight fit, but it got on there. Well, so that's it, resurrected and up and running. Um, we've changed over to using these big batteries instead of the small batteries. So I'll put the small batteries back in storage again. But I'm not going to be able to get a max reading on what's coming in because it's a total grey out once again. But next time the sun shines, we can uh, get some readings from it and see that everything's working okay and um, try and get a calculation on what our max PV, actual PV input is. So guys, before I go and play with this a bit more, I want to say a big thank you to all of our regular viewers and uh, our subscribers. If it wasn't for you guys watching, I probably wouldn't bother doing this to be honest with you. So thanks a million for that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and if you think the videos are any good, then give it a, an L thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And um, until next time, do take care of yourselves and I'll see you then.
<laughs> okay guys, so it's now early the next morning. We've got a bit of sunshine. I've come out to take a reading because the batteries will have been run down. And I've got the array turned here. Um, so we should be getting a better reading off that before the ones on the roof start to overpower them. So let's go take a quick look at what it's doing. Just bear with me as I run across here. Okay, so we're getting 20.9 amps at 27 volts. Batteries are starting to charge back up again. Um, the ones on the roof are taking in 560 watts. And the load on the system is just about 900 watts. There's not much on in the house. Uh, 21 amps there now. So the scrap heap challenge has worked out for the moment, which is great news. If I can get a better reading than that at any stage, I'll post it as an update. But so far, so good. 